crucial, crucial episode in the game. Gabbiadini kept his call. Absolutely smashed that one into the top corner. No hesitation, real power and a thunderous penalty there. Andy Dibble could just watch it fly past. On the Giannino situation there, expect that to be sorted out in the next few weeks. Well, that was yesterday's action. The big match on Saturday was at Victoria Park. Hartlepool against Darlington in the first leg of the third division playoff semi-final. Not for the faint-hearted, this one, but it's the Quakers who've taken a giant step towards Wembley. Not an empty seat to be seen at Victoria Park. After all, this is special. Fierce local rivals fighting to go to a Wembley playoff final. Hartlepool's Ian Clark caused problems early in the first half. This was the closest he came to scoring, a superb run, but the post denies him a stunning goal. It was the Quakers who took the lead seven minutes from half-time after Neil Heaney had been fouled. And it's there, and it's Little, and it's Darlington who've got the lead. It's a good time to score. Um, I, don't, I thought the first one was always going to be a, a big goal, you know, and uh, luckily for us, I managed to get on the end of it. 1-0 down at half-time, Hartlepool's mascot Hangers tried his best to convince cameraman Brian that Poole were the team to watch. And after the restart, the monkey was right. The focus was on Hartlepool. This has got to be the equaliser. Oh, how on earth! Poole fans could only look on in disbelief as the ball ran across the face of the goal. Maybe the day belonged to Darlington. And right in cue, the Quakers went two up when Martin Holland brought down substitute Glenn Naylor. There were cries of offside, which the replay doesn't really support. Holland was sent off. Yeah, I touched him, touched him slightly, so maybe he just ran into my hand, so there's <laughs> not much you can do, really. Veteran keeper Andy Dibble came on in place of Paul Arneson, but he faced the awesome task of having to stop Division 3's top goalscorer, Marco Gabbiadini. Darlington were two up, and a trip to Wembley was edging closer. Hartlepool couldn't claw their way back. It's the Quakers who are firm favourites to make the final. The second leg is at Feetham's on Wednesday night, but dismiss Poole at your peril. The tie is not over. I, I, I know the neutrals will think it is, and so will uh, Darlington fans, but we, we've got to go there and be adventurous and, and give it a right good shot, and that's what we'll do. We came to get goals. We also came to defend, so fortunately today we've we done both things right. They had chances. They could have scored, they didn't they? We've got to make sure at Feetham's they don't have any more chances like that. Chris, you have said now that you think that you will be written off, but just how much do you want to win now at Feetham's and win by three goals? <laughs> of course I want to win 3-0 at Feetham's, uh, uh, you know. Oh, we're going to prepare um, for the game at Feetham's and we know the surface that we've got to play on. The team will be selected relating to how the pitch plays. We've got to give it everything we've got. I'm sure the boys will do. On an ugly note, the Darlington manager was struck by a coin shortly after Gabbiadini's penalty. Hodgson joked afterwards that he needed the 50 pence, but it was Gabbiadini who was shortchanged after the final whistle. He was attacked as he headed down the tunnel. The fan managed to get one, which I was probably a little bit disappointed, but I think half the stewards were around me, to be perfectly honest with you, and forgot about the players. And he took a fair wallop on the jaw, but he, he stood his ground. He says he's never been put down before. And have said they won't be taking any further. One foot in the final. Advantage Darlington after Saturday's stormy semi first leg at Victoria Park. One more chance. No surrender from Hartlepool. They still believe their luck will change. Once they were teammates. Now David Hodgson and Chris Turner square up for tonight's crunch second leg. Only one team will go to Wembley next week. It's time to resume the Darlington Hartlepool playoff battle in the North East match. Hello and welcome to Feetham's on perhaps one of the most important nights in the history of both Darlington and Hartlepool Football Club. Joining us tonight is David Mills to watch the game. David, what do you expect tonight? Well, obviously Hartlepool currently losing 2-0. I expect Hartlepool to have a real go at them tonight in a positive way and in a controlled way, but I think we'll see a lot of aggression from Hartlepool. I'm sure we'll see it from both sides, but obviously Hartlepool have to have a real go. Thanks for now, David. We'll hear more from David later. There's a great atmosphere building up, and let's face it, there's a prize worth winning. Anyone fancy a trip to the Twin Towers? Darlington have walked the Wembley way before. In 96, Jim Platt's side took on Plymouth in the playoff final, but it was the Devon Cream that rose to Division 2. 
it would be the perfect stage for George Reynolds. The irrepressible Darlington chairman has always said the Quakers were a safe bet for promotion. Saturday's derby deadlock lasted little more than half an hour, but a two-goal lead doesn't mean it's a formality for David Hodgson's side. Up 2-0, OK. You can look at it in three ways. One nil is it's difficult to score because you haven't got an awful lot to hold on to. Three can give you complacency, but two is a score which still has that fear factor in it. For Hartlepool, the monkey business is over. Just 12 months after almost crashing out of the league, Poole have moved mountains to maintain a realistic promotion challenge. Chris Turner believes his players have earned their weekend lap of honour, but their season isn't necessarily over yet. Everybody expects us now to, to Darlington to go through. The tie's all over finished. We've just got to go there and prove people that we're, we're still in there with a fighting chance. And we still are. Darlington against Hartlepool has never meant more than this. The third division playoff semi-final has got to be decided here tonight. Let's join Roger Taines in the commentary box. Saturday's first leg proved every bit as volatile as you might have expected, with local rivalry so fierce between these two clubs. In fact, both chairmen have appealed to all the fans to keep calm tonight. Events on the pitch might just make that a little testing. Darlington defender Paul Heckingbottom should appreciate feelings on both sides. He played five games on loan for Hartlepool last season. Paul is a former Sunderland trainee, one of four ex Wearside players. Four more started their careers at Middlesbrough. In fact, the only member of the Quakers lineup who didn't bring genuine regional credentials to the club is Danish midfielder Jesper Hoff. Manager David Hodgson leaves well alone and names the same 11 players who came home with that two goal advantage. Hartlepool couldn't ask for a more experienced goalkeeper to step into the breach and Andy Dibble. He takes over from Martin Holland, suspended after Saturday's red card. And he keeps up the local links with both Sunderland and Middlesbrough among his 13 league clubs. Eight of Poole's lineup were either born in the North East or started their careers here. Gary Strodder is an outsider, but Chris Turner is pleased to recall his experienced defender after a hamstring injury. Former Borough striker Chris Freestone and Gary Jones are both back in the attack with Craig Midgley on the bench tonight and James Coppinger missing out completely. A Feetham's debut for referee Mark Halsey from Welling Garden City. He was in charge of Saturday's dramatic win for Barnsley at Birmingham. What chance of seeing another away shock tonight? Well, stand by for part two of this local drama mini-series. All the omens will point towards Darlington, who are looking for only their fifth promotion in their history. Hartlepool have only gone up twice. That's an idea of just how precious the incentives are for these two clubs. Gray, Brumwolf made a good run. Back for Gray. Miller couldn't quite get his tackle in then. Oh, Jones getting back then. Rumble knocks it in once more. That's an own goal and a total disaster for Hartlepool. It's big Gary Strodder, the man who came back. And that is calamity big time. Rumble knocked it in. He felt he had to do something. Keeper got it all wrong then, although he could hardly have expected that. Completely stranded, and it tucked itself in the corner. Well, you plan, you prepare, you think you've got every eventuality covered. Not that one, though. Chris Turner's face and expression says it all there. Can't we call the proverbial mountain to climb now? Darlington throw, looking to get some distance on it. Gabbiadini, Duffield is there. Oh, that's a tremendous save by Andy Dibble. Duffield thought then he might have sealed it. The big keeper really got a good stretch there. Andy Dibble. Into stoppage time. And Gabbiadini gets another chance to come through. Gabbiadini, and Dibble does well. Tried the motive then. But still, Dibble made a committed save. Gabbiadini's first touch was decent. The ball always bobbling away from him. And the keeper, an experienced save. 
referees preparing to get the players right by the tunnel there. And that is it. It's next stop. Wembley for Darlington. Gary Strodder, a personal disaster for him. The unlucky man whose own goal after 10 minutes tipped it firmly Darlington's way. Three goals, just too much for Hartlepool to make up. These Darlington supporters can't wait to celebrate. They know they're on their way to the Twin Towers to give the Darlington team its credit. Often when teams fail to go up automatically, when they think they've done enough, they find it hard to get back up and really put it... You might find this a strange comment to make, I'm just going to put a place. It's on FA Cup final, it's on League Cup final. We're going there and the fans will enjoy it obviously because it's a big, big case for them. For the players, when will you not be there anymore? So they're going to make the most of it, but we're going there simply to get out of this goddamn division and get up one, and, and that's all we're doing. Concentrate slowly on that. Yeah, we do. We didn't want to do the hard way. But at the end of the day, for the club, it's brilliant, but we're trying to get out of this division. That's the only thing that's important to me. And to this man as well, by the way. <laughs> well, it's fantastic, I mean, especially for the fans who come through the mill this year. We've had some great performances over the season, but let ourselves down at the end. So for them, it's, it's good, and we've just got to uh, keep our feet on the ground and think that there's one more big hurdle for us to do. But if we play like we have done the majority of the season, I hope hopefully it'll go well for us. I think the game as a, as a real thriller was, was taken away after the first, obviously the first goal. And that summed our look up in the, in the two ties where, you know, it's an own goal. And uh, Gary really couldn't do a lot about it. And uh, unfortunately, that took out the sting out of the game. But uh, from my point of view, I was pleased the way that boys kept playing. And, uh, you know, it would have been it's one of those situations where they could have folded up and felt sorry for themselves. But they kept going and, and, and tried to make a, you know, a, Great I think they've done well, but I would like to see if they'd only won one or two games when they're not able would have been up, you know, for some reason, I don't know whether they got the jitters or whether they're paying them too much money, I don't know what it was, but they seem to have slackened off. Our supporters have never been this in the playoffs before, they've never had no real success since 1991, when they had about, that's the only second promotion that the club's ever achieved, and, you know, we, we you know, I look ahead now, and I look ahead to next season. And you're going to enjoy your trip down to the Twin Towers? I, I'll enjoy that, yeah. I'll enjoy that and I'll enjoy it better if we come back with a result. If we come back with if we come back with a result, I'll bloody walk back. Let me bare feet. <laughs> so I suppose the big question now is, will George be walking back from Wembley? Well, that's probably got a lot to do with who Darlington are playing in the final. Tonight, the second leg of the other semi-final took place at Peterborough, where their opponents were Barnet. Playing in the final at Wembley. Tonight they did their part of the job, and David Mills, it was a good professional job, wasn't it? Yes, it was a solid performance. They looked extremely comfortable. Obviously, they had something to cling on to from the first game, and as I say, undoubtedly deserved to go through over the two games. Now, nightmare start for Hartlepool, but it was a dream start for Darlington, wasn't it? It was perfect. I mean, it was unfortunate for Hartlepool. Ball knocked in here towards the middle of the goals, two competing for it, and Strodder gets himself in a mix-up there, not really sure how to deal with it. He went initially down to head it, I think, probably saw it late and then was undecided how to deal with it. Really, if he'd stood up, he could have just left foot volleyed it clear with a controlled volley. But it's easy, sat up in the stand, isn't it, watching. When you've got to make a decision instinctively, that's what happens. Desperate look for Gary Strodder, but the Hartlepool defence did seem to be having all sorts of troubles with balls getting crossed in. Yes, I mean, I think the surface, pl uh, the surface played its part. It was live, even though it was soft. I mean, you see the flick on here and the bounce, and you see the height it goes. Little Peter Duffield gets a good header there, and the goalkeeper makes a good save. But the surface was difficult all night. It was difficult to play football on, that's for sure. So Hartlepool in all sorts of trouble at this stage. All, what they've got to do is now bomb forward, and the problem was that they just didn't, really. That's right. I mean, it's a psychological barrier as well they've got to beat. They had very few chances. There was a shot there from Freestone. You could see he was trying to hit the dipping volley. Didn't connect properly. Free kick here. Pulled his shot wide of the post, Stevenson. Goalkeeper comes, gets a punch on drops back out to Stevenson, hits his volley into the ground, and again, fortunately for Darlington, goes straight back into the goalkeeper's hands. But that was the story of the night, really. When it came down to it, it was actually the Quakers who were still making the chances towards the end of the first half. Yes, I mean, Hartlepool did have to push forward. We see a ball knocked in here beyond the far post again, headed back across the goal. Little Peter Duffield, instinctive header, can't get his head wrapped around the ball, and fortunately just knocked it wide of the post. 
And again, after half time, I mean, obviously, Chris Turner's got to have said to his Hartlepool players, you've got to go out and attack. But then it's Darlington who come out and have a couple of chances straight away. Well, I think the game got stretched a little bit then. Hartlepool inevitably had to push forward, and they're always going to be vulnerable to the counter attack. Ball knocked in here, and it's Tuttle there that gets the header on. Can't get a great deal of power. Coming in from the right hand side, debatable who got the final touch, whether it was Clark or the attacking player, but again, straight at the goalkeeper. But be fair, I mean, we've got to be fair, Hollywood did have their moments, they worked hard, and the disallowed goal, I mean, that was obviously a key moment. What did you make of that? Well, I didn't see too much wrong with it, to be perfectly honest. The ball's knocked into the middle of the goals here. There's a lot of players in there. It's a good header, certainly no, uh, no foul by uh, Freestone, who headed it. The only thing you might say is that somebody's turned the goalkeeper as he's come out to make contact with the ball. But I thought that was a little bit harsh on them. Good flick on here. Headed up in the air, gets in round the back of them, controlled volley. If he hits the target, it's a goal. But it was one of the few occasions, really, when Hartlepool did get beyond the Darlington defenders. And they needed to do that more often, really, to threaten. It just wasn't their night, was it, at the end of the day? Well, it wasn't. I mean, as I say, I don't think there was any doubt that Darlington deserved to go through over the two games. They didn't get too much good fortune, Hartlepool. I mean, Clark in the first game hit the post at 0-0. If that goes in, it could have been a different outcome. Tonight, obviously, they've had a goal disallowed when it might have just given them a lift. But uh, to be fair, Darlington in control and, as I said, be looking forward to going to Wembley. Yeah, they could have had the icing on the cake just at the end. Marco nearly gave one for the fans there. Yeah, again, pushing up, trying to play offside. Gabbiadini going down the right-hand side, threatens on his right, brings it on his left foot, clips it with the inside of his left foot towards the far corner. You can see what he's trying to do, trying to bend it inside the far post. Defender just gets across and gets a block on, and the ball rebounds beyond the far post. After 1,668 football league games, the curtain opens on the season.